Hi, we're going to try to do a little pitcher flattening today. See if I can do a little tutorial to help some of you guys um, flatten the pictures of your weaves or your diamond wraps so you can put them online. Um, it's not that hard and most of the programs that are out there uh, all have the same type of function so you can do this. So we'll uh, try to get this under 15 minutes so I can keep it on YouTube. Okay, here we go now. Um, uh, got the computer up and running. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, load the pictures from my camera onto the computer. It's different for each type of camera. Uh, this one that I'm using right here, I have to put a cable across because it doesn't have those little chips in it. So let me zero this in a little bit more. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is load my pictures on. Um, and what I usually do is I load them onto my documents. Okay, I open the file. Don't need to use Nero. So, um, I open the file, close Nero, and you see all the pictures that are in this in the camera right now. They're all different shots. I've actually taken three series of shots with the camera so that I could see what is the best setting and shows me the best color. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all these. Go back here and do that again. You got to start all the way in the corner. Highlight the entire thing. I'm going to send it to my documents. Now this is going to take probably a few minutes. So um, I'll come back to this in just a second. Okay, pictures are loaded on the computer now. I'll go up to uh, my program that I'm going to use, which is Microsoft Digital Pro 10. Like I said, uh, most of the uh, photo editing programs have these functions, the same types of functions. You may have to look around it a little bit. Okay, I'm going to load my pictures onto the program. Sometimes it takes a little while to load up the pictures on this computer. It's got a lot of stuff on it. So we'll take a second here. There we go. Okay, I've decided that the best set of pictures is this last set right here. Um, take those and one more. We'll take the final picture. There's six pictures in this segment. And um, this seemed to be the clearest and best. So we'll play with this. Uh, I'm going to move this one up here. Okay. So they're in the order. Now, what I want to do is show you how I took the photos. There's the first photo. There's the second photo. There's the third photo. There's fourth, fifth, and sixth. Okay? You can see there's a general graduation as I took the pictures. Usually about a sixteenth of an inch or somewhere in that ballpark. <clears throat> I'm not real big on science, so I don't measure. Okay. So I got all those pictures. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to go through all of them and auto fix the color. Or not color, but auto fix the exposure. Which I just did on that one. Let's go back to this one. Auto fix. And now I will do it with all of them. So what this does make sure that I don't have one frame that 
is darker or a different color than the others. This should get them at least close enough. Now what I'm going to do is straighten the picture. Um, what I mean by straightening the picture is I take the, the picture straightening tool, um, which maybe you can't see here, but it's, it's down here. It says straighten picture. And what it does is it draws a line so that you can straighten up the picture. What I do is I use the blank. And that straightens the picture up. Now I'll do that to all of them too. And then I'll come back and uh, we'll go to the next step. Okay, now we have the exposure auto fix taken care of. It's straightened. I've got everything ready to go. I'm going to start doing some cropping. But first, I'm going to decide what direction I'm going to go with this one. I'm going to go working from the top of the fish this way. So I'm going to save that picture as a whole picture and I'm going to go to the next one. And I'm going to take my cropping tool and I'm going to cut, crop it just below the halfway point or right around the halfway point of the weave. Trying to keep it just below that light line. You see this light line in the weave. Um, if I put that in each one, then there'd be six different light lines in it. So I'm going to try to keep that out. Also notice that in this, I haven't um, uh, done the overwrap on the threads because I'm going to put this online. I'm going to take this picture and put it online and see if my other uh, Peers feel that this is something I should keep. I'm kind of happy with it, but not overly happy with it. So, anyway, that's the first one we're going to crop. Now we'll go up to the next one. Do the same thing. Grab the cropping tool. Get about the halfway point. Come across. Take up that whole segment. I'm going to pull it down just a little bit again. I don't want to get that light line in there too much. Okay, now I'm going to do that to the rest of these, and then we'll come back and finish it up. Alright, got all the cropping done. Now I'm going to take and start putting the picture together. Uh, this was my last one that I cropped, so I'm going to go right back to the beginning, to the one I didn't crop. And I'm going to click and drag. That's how this one functions. They may be different for different programs. And if, you'll, if you can see here, right at the top edge of this cut picture is a squid. It looks like his head, a little bit of the eye. So I'm going to try to match that up with the picture above. Usually you'll end up with fairly straight lines at each end too. So that one matches up pretty good. Let's go with the next one. Click and drag. This one looks like the eye is going to be the situation that I'm going to be looking for. So I'm going to drag that eyeball up there. That looks about right. Next one, click and drag. Same routine. Got the bottom of the eye here to use as a go-by. Uh, that looks pretty good good maybe just a little bit more there we go uh, so that's one two three let's do this one okay more of a teeth type situation on this one and the fins line up so that's looking good it's coming together pretty good this time And this should be the last one coming up. Okay, all I got to work with here is these couple of gray shadows, which is supposed to be the shadow of the head coming off the sand. Okay, I think we got it right there. Click up here, kind of back out of this, see how it looks. It looks pretty good. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to crop one more time. 
I'm going to crop the whole segment. I want to leave this in so the guys can see how I trim uh, my wraps so that the thread doesn't just fall off the end of a straight cut. Okay, I'm done with that. Now all I got to do is go up, rename it. Uh, it's a halibut. It's Byron's halibut. I'm going to take out the pick to weave because it's actually just a picture. Okay. It's 100 by 138 threads and I'm going to save it. It looks like I'm going to save it in um, JPEG. Yep. Okay. Which is an easy one to load on. Now one last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look and see what size the image is. Most of the uh, sites don't like you to put this big an image in. So I'm going to drop this down to 650 and the way this works is you resize one side the other side does it automatically. So now this is another one I want to save. So I'm going to go up here save as um, and then I'm just going to put so that I know what it is dash 650. That's what I lowered it to. And then save. Okay. It's all done. Um, hope that helps you guys a little bit. It's not that hard a procedure. And now for the bad news. After having it online, and um, though most of the comments were pretty good, um, most of them were very supportive and wanted me to keep it. You know, there were enough um, not-so-positive comments that I'm going to cut this off. Maybe I'll even film it for you. Well, the sad event is about to happen. Uh, there's the weave that I just did the pictorial on. Worked out great for the pictorial, but uh, it's not going to happen for the the tournament um, and charity. I uh, have already started work on a different pattern. I'm not going to go with this halibut at all. Because um, I think someone mentioned that it doesn't lend itself well to the average fisherman figuring out what's going on in the weave. So, you're going to watch me do it. Here it goes. Some of you may be wondering if this is damaging the blank. In this section of the rod, it's not going to have any effect at all on the blank. Plus, I didn't go that hard with it. So, here we go. I'm going to save. the weave. There it is, gang. All gone. 